Hello, Tubies! I'm back with more witchery and skullduggery on the YouTube. Frank wanted me to talk about stones, so I have picked out five stones that I will talk a bit about. Because, uh, you know, I only have ten minutes, so this will probably be a several parter for me to cover even some of the stones. Witches have been using stones for as long as there's been witchcraft, semi precious stones, because stones have their own energies, their own vibrations. They vibrate at particular frequencies, which give them uh, personalities, energies that uh, we can, energy we can carry around in a little package in our pocket or in our magic bag. We can add to most of the most of the ways that we do spells. You can add stones to it, make it even more powerful. Um, the first one I, I just held up. This one is a, a newer stone. This is fluorite. A fluorite, I'll talk, talk about a great deal, but you should have some resources, too. Not just me, because I only got 10 minutes. You must have this. Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Crystal Gem and Metal Magic, the easiest to use. Whenever you got a Cunningham Encyclopedia, it may not be the most complete, but it will be the most easiest to use of your magical uh, encyclopedias, usually, usually. And at the time of the writing of this book, fluorite was considered a new stone brought in by the New Age, and very little was known about it. So you won't find a whole lot about fluorite in this book because they didn't know a lot about it yet. Also, love is in the earth. There are two of them, and this is the smaller of the two. This is the laying on of stones. But if you remember, love is in the earth. These people have a book about the size of a phone book. So if you want to be inundated on data, you want to check that out. Also, podcasts. You can learn a lot of podcasts while you're commuting in your car. You can learn a lot of witchcraft on podcasts. I recommend highly Media Ostra Octera. And I'll flash that on the screen. Media Ostra Octera. Uh, Oriah the Sphinx is teaching me more about stones that I ever knew. You know, stones that I thought I knew should teach me the chemical makeup of the stone. Uh, the, science, the science behind the stone and the metaphysics. Uh, it's a great podcast. You learn a lot more. You only learn like one stone each episode. But uh, you learn more about that one stone than ever. It's her that I first learned fluorite. Fluorite's one of the new ones, but so necessary in the times we live in now. Fluorite, let's see what I got here. Uh, fluorite's grant for grounding, focus, calmness, protection from psychic vampires. Fluorite protects us from random energies of other people. If you're one of those people that are too sensitive, not just psychic, but you just pick up the random static of other people and it drives you fucking crazy, you need some fluorite. If you're susceptible to road rage, or even if you're just a commuter, you need some fluorite. I find most road rage is because we have driven through somebody's energy pattern that's raging and somehow let that energy in and think it's us and we're pissed and we don't even know why we're pissed. Road rage, protection from random static, psychic vampires, psychic attack, fluorite, fluorite, fluorite. Uh, it's also, like I said, grounding, focus, calmness. Those are all great things, too. Let's see, let's see. So it's smaller. Brick red jasper. Man, really hard for the autofocus to see that, but brick red jasper. Uh, so balancing the chakras, stabilizing, protection. It's good to rub a stone around between your palms, get some static, get some heat. Heat the stone up, wakes the stone up, that kind of thing. Brick red jasper, uh, in addition to all those, is an excellent protection stone. Legend has it that it was used as a protection amulet that would launch its own counterattack if it received an attack. Uh, back in these times, they would paint little warriors and, and archers and stuff on a piece of red jasper and hang it around the neck or carve one into an arrow shape hanging around the neck. Excellent, excellent defense. Um, let's see, Moonstone. Moonstone, an incredible stone. Here in California, it is a common stone that washes up along the beach. Uh, this is polished, um, so you get the raw ones rolling up on the beach, but under a full moon, you can't miss them. 
uh, moonstones have this way of refracting light that makes them glow in certain lights. Uh, in addition to that, it's good for divination, meditation, intuition, all things with the moon. Uh, let's see. Uh, wishes. Making wishes, probably because it goes along with full moon ceremonies. We get to wish there. All right, there's three of them. <gasps> Jet. You see it? Jet. Just for healing, protection from violence. There's not a whole lot of those, the protection from violence ones. That's, that's a bit different. Um, shields you from psychic attack. Anti-depression. Jet's good for, for protecting you from depression. <laughs> or, or getting rid of depression. Um, carry them around in your pocket. Put it in a little bag. You know, you definitely, uh, there are a bunch of old... Uh, Charging a stone method, to see the one I learned as a kid, you hold it in the palm of your hand, say this stone I hold in my hand should be strong as the sun, strong as the moon, the movement of the planets, and an extension of my own will, so mote it be. And you can come up with better words than that too, I'm sure, but another one, hematite. Hematite's really trippy stone, looks kind of like metal. It's kind of like metal, but it's a stone. Uh, it's definitely healing. Healing, courage, stability, confidence. Uh, you don't want to carry a hematite on you for too long. It can drain you. It can ground you so much, you become drained. So, you know, wear hematite jewelry or carry it on you when you need it, but not a good thing to just carry it with you all the time. Uh, should be noted, the, uh, the, the magnetic hematite, that you find out in the world is not hematite. Now you can ch I checked my facts before I opened my fucking mouth, like I always do. Uh, it's fake. It's artificially produced. I thought it was really cool, and I was just trying to find me a distributor. So I was going, wow, mag magnet and hematite. Hmm. And there's a thing called hematite turned magnetite. Very rare stone. Uh, only, a, I think, one known deposit in the world, uh, as I've heard at least. Uh, and I don't have time to tell you about hematite gun magnetite. That's very different than the magnetic hematite. You run into that, it's fake, it's an artificial stone, you know, it's like some magnetic glass or something like that. Um, to be magnetic, it must have some uh, types of metal in it uh, for it to do that. And this is hematite, it's not metal. It looks like that. It looks like metal, but it's not metal. Magnets are metal. Uh, there's just a, a few stones there for you. I guess that didn't take that long. So, you know, eventually, you know, maybe about three or four videos could get through all of those. But uh, the stones can be anointed with oils. Uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, vibration, finding the right vibration, finding the resonant frequency of a stone. And if I don't know if you're a singer and you can hit a note equal or equivalent to that, a uh, very powerful bonding experience with the stone. Um, so a few things there. Definitely check out, uh, I'm already eight minutes, jeez. Uh, Media Astra Octera, the Cunningham's, gotta have it, gotta have it. I got a lot more stones in here. Um, there's quartz crystals I probably won't go too much into because... Uh, you can find so much about quartz crystals since the new age. Very neat. Very part. Very neat again.